Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome day 61 of 100 days 100 concepts. Today in this video, we are going to do a review of blast furnace. Many we all know, blast furnace is used for iron making. That means, it is one of the important extractive method of iron. Okay, so what it looks like, so we all know how it looks like, right? So initially, it will be sloping outwards at the top you have a small cylindrical surface and then it will be tapered down and then you have a reservoir this is the shape of the blast furnace so these are uh, different regions okay that you see in blast furnace so what we do is we add all the charge or the raw materials from the top okay solid raw materials which are my iron ore or pellets or sinter okay so usually sinters are more useful for blast furnace iron making root okay other than this you add coke and you add flux so what is the function of all of these so here uh, these iron ore pellets or sinter it's called as burden which has the metallic values that means whatever iron content is there the input for the iron content is this burden. Other than this, you have coke. What is the function of coke? So, coke has various functions. So, to meet the thermal and the chemical requirements, that means it acts as a fuel and it acts as a reducing agent. Okay. So, coke will combust with the help of preheated air. And how preheated air is injected inside? You have something called as tears the tears are nothing but the pipes which are injected or inserted into my blast furnace okay of course blast furnace in the sense uh, this is my outer shell okay outer shell is usually made up of steel and you have a refractory layer inside okay why refractories are used refractory layer helps and protects my outer steel so that it will not get damaged okay so this is uh, how air is inserted using my tears so usually we add or inject preheated air which is oxygen enriched okay so we use preheated air which is oxygen enriched injected inside my furnace using these tears and here what happens the coke will react with the preheated air so what happens if carbon coke is nothing but carbon so if it's it is combusting you see co forming and this is my reducing agent okay co will be reacting with my burden and it reduces the over particles right and now also this reaction is an exothermic reaction so what is an exothermic reaction exothermic reaction is a reaction where heat is produced so sufficient amount of heat is produced by these reactions and various other reactions which are exothermic okay we have various other reactions also taking place inside the furnace and this heat will be sufficient enough for the smelting operation so what is the blast furnace it is a smelting furnace where you see both melting that is taking place plus a reduction okay so we are reducing iron ore into iron and also you are getting liquid iron okay so you are producing the liquid iron so you are melting it that's why it's a smelting operator and now if you also see that you are adding the charged materials from the top okay but you are also providing the preheated air from the bottom that means one reactant is coming from the top and the other is coming from the bottom so because of this opposite you know flow it is called a counter current reactor okay both the reactants are In opposite direction, they are flowing in opposite direction. 
and uh, this uh, charge is actually done such that you see alternate layer so if this is my iron ore a coke layer will come and an iron ore and then a coke layer so alternate layers of ore and coke is injected and of course this flux can be added uh, by uh, you know when you produce sinter usually sinter is produced from very fine particles so this can be added there right so now as i said coke is used as a flux and a reducing agent now what is the role of this flux flux is usually added to remove the gang particles so gang is nothing but impurities that we have and these are reacted to flux and these are rea uh, removed out usually flux like limestone and dolomite is added in my blast furnace so now as it is going down liquid is generated so flux will be reacting with my gang to generate what slag whereas all my other you know oxides let's say usually ores are hematite and magnesite but basically hematite is used in blast furnace so this is reduced to give me fe of course you have various uh, other reactions also but these are some main things okay so i directly wrote the initial and the final step but we have three intermediate steps also right so this is my liquid now so in the bottom you see the cylindrical portion at the bottom this is for the sink that means it is acting as a reservoir for my liquid slag and liquid hot metal and this sink which i said is called as earth okay and how this is removed out you have a tap hole coming out of the hearth okay this is a tap hole so previously you used to have two separate tap holes one for hot metal and one for slag okay so slag notch or iron notch it is called but now in modern days we don't need to actually have two tap holes only one tap hole can be you know sufficient to remove both hot metal and slag and then what we do is we try to you know separate their ways so let's say this is my tap hole and as the you know metal is flowing okay after tapping let's say this is the tap hole which is opened which is drilled out okay we actually broke it so metal will flow right so what happens now you will see that it will flow onto the runner and next we have two different pathways one for slag and other for hot metal okay so two separate routes are actually given so this is separated using a skimmer okay so there will be something called as a skimmer plate so based on the densities we know slag has less density as compared to the hot metal right so we can easily separate out based on the densities and slag is taken to something called as my slag slag granulation plant okay sgp we call right so what we do here so usually we take this liquid slag and we inject very high pressure water jet so that these are cooled down to form tiny slag particles okay so these tiny slag particles it will be looking like sand it is rich in all the important mgo and cao which is helpful for cement productions so this is taken for production of slag cement okay and this hot metal is taken for steel making okay using ladles which are the transportation system right so now we have got two outputs okay so what are the inputs that we have the inputs are the iron burden coke flux and also you have to consider your preheated air that you are passing these are the reactants now we have seen two outcomes one is the hot metal and the second is the slag so are these only outputs from the blast furnace no you also have something coming on top right which we call the blast furnace top gas okay top gas or blast furnace gas you can call it and this consists of co co2 and most importantly nitrogen 
right so nitrogen is coming from the air right so you see that we are actually inserting or injecting air so air contains 79 percentage of nitrogen so it's obvious that you actually find nitrogen in the top gas so this is how the operation takes place of course it's not that in 10 minutes you can study all blast furnace so for that reason only we have already made a full playlist where you can see i think five to seven videos complete iron making is available on this youtube channel only so you can go and search in playlist so that you can find each and every part of blast furnace in detail right so yeah if you like it please hit the like button and also share with all the gate metallurgy aspirants and don't forget to enroll under us so that's it from this video thank you guys we'll meet you in the next one